Accessing library computer data. And to make sure history never forgets the name Enterprise. Hey everybody, welcome to the Penske Podcast. If you haven't tuned in before, this is a podcast where we are running through all 178 episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, giving our thoughts and feelings about each and every one. Right now we're up to episode 19 of season 5, it's called The First Duty. It was directed by Paul Lynch, written by Ronald D. Moore and Naren Shankar, and it aired back on March 30th, 1992. In this episode, while visiting Starfleet cadet Wesley Crusher at Starfleet Academy, the crew of the uh, USS Enterprise learned of an accident that claimed the life of a cadet. It's an interesting episode. It's the penultimate Wesley Crusher episode. And uh, it's interesting in how it deals with that character. So Christian is here to talk about this one from our uh, the Reddit Star Trek viewing party, which you can go see over on Reddit, r slash r slash slash Star Trek viewing party. <laughs> and uh, there'll be a link in the description below. And we are going to talk about the first duty right after this. Five ships crossing within 10 meters of each other and igniting their plasma trails. It's one of the most spectacular and difficult demonstrations in precision flying. And it hasn't been performed at the academy for over 100 years. Do you know why? It was banned by the academy following a training accident, sir. An accident in which all five cadets lost their lives. I think that Nicholas Locarno wanted to end his academy career in a blaze of glory, and that he convinced the four of you to learn the Colvard Starburst for the commencement demonstration. If it worked, it would thrill the assembled guests, and Locarno would graduate as a living legend. Only it didn't work. And Joshua Albert paid the price. Am I correct? Cadet, I asked you a question. Am I correct? I choose not to answer, sir. You choose not to answer? Starfleet Academy. Is it everything that your hopes and dreams uh, thought it would be? This is the first time we've ever seen Starfleet. Or the Academy, Sorry. anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, it was... <laughs> beautiful beautiful <laughs> grounds. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were doing your doing a monologue or if you were asking me a question. Uh, it, it's <laughs> it's it's a really great picture, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's a beautiful beautiful like uh, oil mat painting or whatever yes. with the, the the Bay Bridge in the back. Uh, the I have I have serious questions about Boothby's ability to uh, maintain that. Yeah, you think you think that they you think that it would have a little bit more. Uh, automation. Although I don't know if he is big into that or if he's one of these like Luddites from the 24th century. <laughs> you literally stole the words right out of my mouth. He is absolutely a, a perfect companion for Picard's uh, brother. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I think... He even dresses like him. Right. <laughs> yeah. in, in like kind of loose, rough homespun looking clothing yeah very very billowy very billowy clothing a lot of like uh, extra material involved if that's true i guess everyone who isn't in starfleet would kind of be um homebody types like that like anti-tech types or at least that's what the show has us believe at this point there's definitely well the, the problem is that star trek only really shows two kinds of people either people in starfleet who love technology or the people in starfleet who hate technology but i feel like there's should honestly be a very large portion of the population uh, because I don't think we've completely wiped out laziness. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. That there's a large part of the population who doesn't want to serve in Starfleet but also doesn't want to live like a Oregon Trail settler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they have all the technology and none of the work. So I think it's kind of like... I just wonder if that section of the population looks like the humans from Wally. <laughs> right. Yeah. But then again, apparently all food they made in the future is super nutritious. So 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're not wasting effort or anything. The wine they the wine that they uh, grow or uh, ferment is very tasty, I'm told, and everything. But yeah, we're going to be yeah. talking about the first duty, which is the Wesley Crusher episode where Wesley gets in trouble. Um, it's the first time we've seen him since the game, which was earlier in the season. He's oh, now, what he's, classic! Yeah, he's now back at Starfleet um, with. I guess he's involved in piloting, which isn't anything I ever thought that he'd be interested in. Um, well, go ahead. I mean, he's a he's a young guy, and being a hotshot pilot kind of makes sense. And he was the helmsman of the ship. Although I guess I, I would say that piloting a thousand ten thousand ton uh, starship is a little bit different from piloting a fighter but yeah it seems to operate I mean, at a much his, his main job speed. was besides engineering was piloting so it's true he's never it always seems like he just fell into that job as opposed it, it never really connects to me that he'd be involved in this kind of because he's always seems to be more interested in the sort of um the engineering side of things yeah engineering sciencey aspect i mean I, I understand this is supposed to be college and this is what he's going to do mm-hmm. so, uh, so i'm fine with that um it's just it, it does seem it always strikes me as a little bit odd that that's what he chooses to do. Although the the episode goes out of its way to say that this this team is like highly regarded on the campus of Starfleet Academy, um, it would kind of be like the Duke basketball team or something like that. Basically, uh, at Duke. Um, I mean the promotional ladder in Starfleet is kind of weird because. Really, I feel like it ought to be by rank, not by position, but they always play it up as by position. So you advance from the con, uh, the helmsman position, to operations, to tactical, or either either to from the con to either operations or tactical, kind of depending upon how they want it, yep. then to the set first officer, and then to captain. Yep. But it, I don't think it always makes sense, because after data dies quote unquote in uh the most toys wharf is put in operations all right but yeah. really does wharf yeah. really fit in there i feel like his best use should be in tactical why does he have to go through this way and if you are a junior officer do you always have to start out at the con yeah why can't right. you just go be a junior department head in engineering and i think the really the real answer is we barely see jordan in jordy enough we have to put Wesley in a non-critical front row of a, a visible position where we can actually see him. Yeah, so he gets to be the con. Be there's the con. only there's only a couple there's only a couple roles, and you ha- you have the same yeah. you have the same senior staff just sort of rotating between the roles depending on what they would actually do, even if it doesn't make a lot of sense. Wh- whether it's Diana or Deanna flying the uh, the ship in Generations or anything yeah. like that, it's uh it's interesting. I mean. The thing about so, uh, what's your sort of general take on First Duty as an episode as it stands? I think First Duty. I mean, it's it's a pretty good episode. I mean, it's re- well regarded as an episode. I think that it breaks a little bit of the TNG mold in that Starfleet people made mistakes and they're involved in a cover up and it resulted in someone dying. And looking at the notes, sure enough, I mean, Michael, uh, not Michael Pillar, uh, Rick Berman didn't want to do the episode. Because yeah, quote, yeah. this is Star this is Star Trek. It's about exploring. It's not about going back to Earth. Yep. yep. But I think that's such a narrow vision of what Star Trek should be. And of course, Ronald Moore is one of the guys who wrote it. And he said, Yeah, but this is a really good story. Let's let's explore that. And I like that about it. I want to see this more of this kind of character uh conflict, especially as I've been watching uh, this is season five, right? Yeah, season five yeah, with you guys. Five. Yes, it's very character centric, but I think you're limiting yourself so much by making it character centric, but with no character conflicts. Yeah, yeah. So if you're gonna do this, puts it put in some conflict, and especially for goody two shoes like Wesley, this is, I think, great character development for him, and I think it's arguably probably the best performance we'll ever get out of Will Wheaton. Yeah, I I, I do think he's um. He's certainly uh, solid in it. It's, I think it's a good episode for Wesley, um, just because you know it does it does sort of undo everything that's been problematic or criticized about him in the past, where he's been sort of a, a wonderkind who um, just has everything. You know, saves the ship all the time, a Ball super genius. Lap, yeah, 
everything falls in his lap and he, he handles everything well. Th- this one flips it around, and this is his um, penultimate appearance on the show, basically. He's only they should gonna... have ended it here. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking that. It actually, um, this is not a bad... If this is the last you ever saw of him, it's not that bad of an episode. For it's, it's a it's a unfortunately it's a poor ending episode because obviously we we would want to see what happens to Wesley after this. Oh, see, I I, I don't have any need to see what happened to really? him. Really? Yeah, like I, like I, I think what they eventually I, so. I think what they eventually do with him is actually less good than oh absolutely. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> like first duty is an excellent episode, and if you're going to end on a high point. Might as well end here. I just don't know if it's a great. I don't know if how great it would be in the role of a final episode in the sense that it it leaves a lot of questions like, all right, well, what's going to happen to him? Is he going to get beat up every day? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, on in the academy, uh, how is he? Is this going to like dramatically alter his uh, career options? Yep. All right, the, his final episode is much worse, regardless of what you think about that. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't. They should have um, still ended it here. It, it doesn't. I, what he eventually does is not sort of what I would consider to be in the arc of the character. I guess they kind of set it up here, but what do you mean? Uh, just I, I don't. Oh no, way, you're talking about the, his, his actual final appearance, not yeah, in this in episode. Yeah, whatever, whatever that episode is called. In no, no, it seven. doesn't. I mean, then I mean, we can get to that. <laughs> yeah, at some point. at that episode. The, I, I mean, the, the Wesley Crusher here, I think, is fairly satisfying um, mm-hmm. a turn of events for the way things go. And I think that, you know, the, the he basically, this episode basically has one really great scene to me, which is the Picard and Wesley confrontation yes. in the ready room. Yes. Um, outside of that, I feel that this episode maybe came out of the oven a little bit too early or something. I'm not really enthralled by it. And I don't know if... I think it's got all the components that I would be looking for, sort of a conflict, like Wesley has mm-hmm. to lie, whether he has to choose whether to go with his friends or go with Starfleet, um, all that stuff. Everything kind of works here. I just don't... I, I think the, the court scenes don't really do it for me. They're not they're not dramatic enough. I, I feel like they're a little bit stilted and a little it, bit this dull. This is no A Few Good Men, to be sure. Right. I was actually thinking that. It's like, wow, A Few Good Men is actually, you know, like... You you need people yelling at each other or something in the courtroom, and this well, does, that's sorry. Good, well, it, it it's just it, this does not really have that. All the court scenes here are extremely dry. Um, just sort of like yes. evidence upon evidence, and the the prosecution or whatever you want to call them, the judges are basically <laughs> kind of leading all the witnesses into it uh, into lies, which seems kind of obvious to me. But what were you? Yeah, gonna say? I, I I think that again. The one failing of the episode is that TNG suffers from being so reserved. Nobody runs. Nobody. People yell rarely. People they don't they can't bring out a lot of the emotion, which is what makes really great episodes like Sarek or anything where you see a lot of emotion come from characters that much better because it stands out so much. Yeah. I mean, I would like to see. I mean, I think that the actor for Commander Albert did a pretty good did did a good job. There's nothing bad about it, but I think it could have been better. I think when Wesley is being dressed down by Picard, I think that could have been better. I, I I want there to see more conflict. Picard is virtually his. They've the characters said it, even if it's not super believable. But the characters have said that he's almost like a surrogate father to him. Yeah. And at at least he's a huge role model. And to have your role model cursing you out, I'm not really, but ba- dressing chewing him you down, out, yeah, yeah, g- giving you the seventh degree about this. I feel like there should be more reaction in Wheaton's face. I don't know if that's a lacking in his acting or a lacking or or a lack of directing uh, or writing or just the environment. The environment of Star Trek feels very can feel very dull and dry and sterile. And I yeah. think this is one of the things, one of the places where it could have benefited from more color and more motion, like DS Nine. Yeah, I, I I think I'd agree with that. It's um. I think that the conflict itself, like the Wesley Crusher conflict, makes sense to me, but mm-hmm. it's um it doesn't it doesn't feel like there's enough meat on the bone or something like that. Like yeah. I think I think I was reading that they wanted the initially the idea was that the cover up would be more sinister than yes. what actually happened, which I think makes sense. Um they Well it 
I mean, there's two sides. I mean, you can only make it so bad. I mean, it's at a certain point it becomes uncharacteristic for Wesley. I've heard some comments. I read some comments about people complaining that it seemed very out of character for Wesley. Well, yes, if you assume that everyone is always going to be a goody two shoes in Starfleet, but the fact is, pe- pe- human are, humans are still human. Well, he's still, I, I think he's still quite... a goody two shoes in this episode, basically. Like he. Well, I mean, he, he's he's the least goody two shoes that he's ever been in. It took a lot for him to finally get to that point. But I think it's at some point there is a a, a cap on how bad it can get. But I agree that it it would might have been interesting to see make it make the cover up more over it have him actually participate in the cover up more than just omitting the truth yeah the i mean the the darkest angle which i think is almost a weird angle that it goes is when they uh they sort of spin it to make it sound like the kid who died was the reason that it happened that i mean that is pretty dark when you think about it especially when his the kid's life. dad <laughs> is in the room and you say yeah he nearly got us all killed and he got himself killed and then the dad comes to wesley and apologizes for his dead son that was the weirdest part <laughs> i didn't really buy that i mean it was like I, I understand what they were trying to do is to try to make it seem like that was going to be the the impetus that causes wesley to feel sort of moral guilt about it yeah but I can see the, that. the kid's father is so like apologetic for his son who who didn't do anything and it's only based on very flimsy testimony from these kids um well, it, I, th- I felt like the father just gave up on his son so easily in bit. that one i think it might have maybe it would would it have made more sense if he knew crusher before all this like crusher and uh josh were always hanging out at josh's house so albert knew wesley so if wesley well, I mean, says or if, that it, it carries more weight, or like it's like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe this almost happened. I, uh, I, I don't know. I think it might have put a different spin on it. I don't know if it'd be better. I think, I think you could add nuance to it by if you, they had dropped a few hints that this kid was the most delinquent of the cadets, you know, and like but if, instead he's just bad at math, right? Instead <laughs> he's just bad at math, which is all it cares. But I mean, if they had played it up as he was the more troublesome kid, it wouldn't, it still wouldn't be his fault that the thing happened. But if he had had some kind of issues that were brought up, that yeah, like he's like, the shoddiest pilot, and... right? So he's yeah, he's the most unstable of them, but or something it, like that. But then I mean, the other problem is, yeah, my son was never good at flying, and I knew he'd get himself killed. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, exactly. Dad. <laughs> Thanks That's... for believing in me. <laughs> yeah, that that the, that Commander Albert or whatever his name is had had zero faith. I thought that was just the weirdest turn it, it made and sense then, in how they wanted the story to go it just didn't it didn't land for me yeah i mean yeah i mean i, I think there's ways to play it better but i don't know how much better you could make it well, uh, I, uh, yeah one the, thing i was thinking is that guy is going to be raging mad at all of those cadets i mean even after like yeah i'm sorry we're sorry it's not really josh's fault I mean that <laughs> that's a pretty weak apology. You still blamed his son in front of everyone. You got him killed and you covered up and tried to blame him. Yeah, they, if he, I was him I'd be like, "Oh my, I'm going to own this academy. I'm going to sue everyone." It's um it would have been a, a you'd anticipate a little bit of emotion from him as he stands up and yells at him and gets dragged out of court or something. That does not happen. Yeah. Uh, just because that's not TNG's tone as we're talking about, but um yeah, I don't know. I just I I I feel like this episode has everything I'd want out of it, for, but for some reason it's uh, sort of just stilted. I mean, it's got mm-hmm. a, a few good scenes. I understand like why they added the Boothby scenes, but I don't feel that they that they work, even though they 100 percent make sense in context of the episode. Yeah, I thought it was good. I felt he was a good actor. Um, again, I think he's going to kill himself tending to the grounds <laughs> there the acres, all by yeah. himself uh it, it, but well, I, f- I feel like he's a good I th- he's a little bit uh, i don't know if the term is on the nose about a lot of things i mean there's nothing super nuanced about him but i think there's enough there and i think that his little discussion with picard i like i like any time that they don't spell things out for you yeah, and so I feel though, like the mysterious I, thing with him and Picard in the past, I, th- I liked that aspect of it, if nothing yeah, else. Yeah, so I like the fact that they don't, they don't get specific about what he did, but the once you've seen it, the scene where they're sort of walking together at the start is such a sledgehammery foreshadowing of what's going to happen. Yes, it is uh, very much 
you are re- yeah you are repeating we are repeating exactly what happened to you picard so how about you handle it uh like i did which i felt was just a little bit unnecessary and it's not that it doesn't make sense it's just i i think mm-hmm. like you're saying it was just it's a little bit unsubtle like the audience isn't going to get what's going on with them yeah um and i i don't really didn't really care for that the uh outside of that i think that the uh Licardo or the the Licardo. Kid, yeah, Locarno, who whoever uh, Tom Paris's doppelganger, yes, um, <laughs> is he's well cast. I think that was good. He did a very good job. He is absolutely more convincing, I think, than Wesley almost ever is. Yeah. Do uh, you think that? Do you think that the character was written correctly? In what way? They're like, I feel. I, mean, if- I feel that the character is a little bit all over the the place because his his motivations don't seem particularly devious enough and then at the end he sort of accepts all the blame in a way that i don't know makes sense for what the character is supposed to be i think i would have written him to be a little bit more of a um sort of like energetic attention getter like the kind of person you could see really going out and trying to do this drastic maneuver and you know being more obsessed with his legacy and things like that he's I really think also- just allowing more of his charisma to shine through because I think that uh, McNeil is a pretty charismatic actor and I think that his characterization as ex Locarno now Paris on Voyager is pretty good and I can believe that he's that kind of guy but I think that what what they're talking about here is any is peer pressure and anytime yeah, there's a yeah. click or any elitist group where the leader is there and it's mostly about him rather than the group and he's using the group to reinforce himself, those groups need a very strong... I mean, this is basically Star Trek Mean Girls. Uh, yeah. But they need... A, I think you need a very strong cult of personality and I think that Locarno doesn't... might not have enough of that. Yeah. Again, yeah. I don't... Like I said, I like the episode. I don't think it's a, a huge problem with it, but I think it absolutely could be better... It's, uh, it's he's probably definitely a those... slime ball. <laughs> yeah, he's. I think the character should have been written more slimy. I guess would be my like. He, he I would have. There should have been more range. If you're going to make him more slime, if you make him all slimy, then you wonder, well, why is anyone going to follow him? Right. Yeah. It can't yeah. just be because he's a good pilot, because that's not going to be enough to cut it. He yep. has to be simultaneously a very type A. This is what we do, and he's usually right. Right. Like, hey, this is what yeah. we do. We can totally do this. He he makes everyone around him. He pushes everyone around him to be better because he wants it to reflect well on himself. Yep. Because if the group's good, well, I made the group, so therefore I'm I get all the credit for this. But then you want to also see the 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 how far how far he's willing to go in order to keep that up. So you can't make him all slimy. You have to balance that out. So hey, look at this awesome guy. Oh my gosh, he also has the dark side. It might seem kind of stereotype, but it's 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 true. People in these clicks don't become they have to have some they have to be good at something even if they're an awful person they've got to be really good at something right i mean maybe he's the best pilot that's ever come to the academy but they ha- you have to state that out they're not following him just because he's a generic cadet right yeah exactly yeah and I, I, it's it's an issue of time as it so often is with these standalone episodes yes. where they they can't they can't get this kind of nuance out of things even though i would have liked it if it was there um, I think that in a modern show, they would have brought in Locarno and Wesley, uh, uh, like mentioning him yep. a couple times in previous episodes. Like, oh, hey, Wesley got into Nova Squad. He's with Locarno. Oh, Locarno, I heard about him. He's the best pilot they've said come out of the Academy in 20 years. He did the Kessler run in 12 parts. <laughs> yes. <or something>. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, I think I, I think I agree with that. It's just kind of a. Uh, just kind of a bland presentation i think which is the blandness of the episode is and I, i'm probably sounding harsher on it than i actually feel about the episode but i do feel that it's just not hitting the points correctly the the two scenes that i think really really work are the picard wesley scene in the ready room yes that's and because I also, Pica- patrick stewart I, owns every scene he's in yeah that, that that was also it was really well directed um and it was stewart i absolutely crushed it i yeah. just like when wesley says um he he doesn't want to answer the question or something, and then Picard <laughs> Picard looks like he's about to punch him when he gets up from the <laughs> desk. And I also like the ending. For some reason, the the Actually, punish- I had a problem with the en- ending. Really? But go ahead. Well, the punishment I think that Wesley gets at the end 
it like feels emotionally cor- correct to me. Like it, I, I don't know why, but I somehow relate to the punishment more than I do to his uh, sort of decision that he's had to come to. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really buy into the. I understand it more than I feel an emotional connection to the problem that he's presented with in this episode. Mm-hmm. But the solution of the other kid gets expelled, Wesley and the others lose an academic year, basically, and have to stay back and redo the year. Um, and just sort of the the goodbye to Picard was like the right level of personality between the two of them. And I like that just the final shot of shaking hands and walking in different different directions. Um it, I think it just it wraps it up really nicely, and I think that's why I would have I would have been happy if this was Wesley's final appearance. That's would a, it, you know, that's would, a good point. My problem was ultimately I think I suppose in in some ways I mean you can only be so mad at Wesley because he didn't overtly do anything to cover it up. He just uh, everything he said was the truth. He just didn't inc- say the whole truth. Yeah. But I still think ultimately I mean he says I feel awful. Well, yeah, you guys let a kid get your your friend die yeah and and you then you lied about it and you 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 were complicit in Licardo's blaming of joshua because you (laughs) were silent right yeah i mean like if if you you didn't condone it but it isn't silence uh, tacit approval uh, uh, of what he's doing. I mean, you yeah, you said it to your friends, but you didn't say it to any anyone else. You let you you let his your friend's dad feel like his son nearly got got himself and a bunch of his friends died. Yeah, you should feel awful. Yeah, yeah, you should really feel awful. Um, and in some ways, I mean, Albert Al- Commander Albert's going to hate him for because his son got killed and they blamed him. Yeah, the team yeah. is going to hate him because they ratted on him. Because he uh, he ratted on them, yep. and the other cadets are going to hate him because he was complicit in this group that got one of their own cadets killed and then lied about it. I mean, everyone's going to hate him. If anyone's going to get shoved into a locker now, it's Wesley. And I, I think that ultimately his punishment, in some ways, I mean, like yeah, he has to repeat a year. School's hard, but as we all know, Wesley's a genius, yeah. and Starfleet Academy looks like the cushiest military academy on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like there should have been either he should have felt worse there should have been some more punishment I felt like it came off a little I suppose when I say I didn't like the ending I mean I feel like it came off a little light on him yep. and also light on Lacarno. absolutely I think he did the right thing and I think the problem is that we don't get to see that turn we don't get to see the turn in Lacarno when he realizes oh god I really have made a mistake because he doesn't yeah, get yeah. He, nobody he has he's forced into seeing this he doesn't make the choice himself he, there's no re- re- revelation for him wesley's the one who has to turn around and um come say to it. terms yeah 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 it's... now go ahead did you read uh i read on memory alpha did you read the original way that war wanted the story to end yeah, it was. Um, remind me. I'm, I'm sort Basically, of blanking on it. Um, the 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 cover up was more overt. The crime was worse. And in the original story, it was more about the team agreeing, including Wesley, to stay silent because it was more like explicitly Lacarno's fault. Yep. And so they agreed. We're and they were going to get kicked out of the academy, but they agreed we're not going to be cowards and blame Lacarno for this. We were all complicit, so we'll all let ourselves get kicked out. Yep. And it's Lacarno who, at the end, is the one to come out and say, "No, no, I did this. Blame me. That they're they're trying to cover for me. It's all my fault." Yeah. And so he's the one who turns. And Picard's speech to Wesley is more about, "Don't throw away your career for protecting a friend." I yes, think that that makes yeah. Picard's speech less powerful, possibly. Uh, because it's not as idealized as telling the, just telling the truth, but I think that the rest might have been a more interesting take on it. What do you think? Um, it's certainly I, that that storyline feels almost like it it doesn't really fit the character of Picard very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's what I would agree. Like I don't, I, I can. I can sort if it wasn't Picard, but it has to be Picard. Like I, I yeah. can't see Picard as being like you should uh, just do this cover up to keep your your um, 
sort of your role in Starfleet continuing, um, which is too bad. I think it's a more, I think that's a more interesting decision for Wesley than the Mm -hmm. decision that they went with, but I don't know how well it fits into the other characters. Yeah. Um, You could do it if the show was not so dependent on including its regular cast members, but they have to be a part of the show. Um, At least at this point. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I I would have liked that. I think. I mean, I I don't really have a problem with how it all goes down. I think that yeah. the the Wesley character sort of gets his a little bit of his come up and see. We don't see him suffering really through the rest of this. Although, what happens here sort of makes sense with why he would be disillusioned with Starfleet. I suppose. Yeah. Um, Although I mean, that's on. I mean the, the problem then is that yeah, that's it's your fault, Wesley. <laughs> you're, right. You're, <laughs> you don't like what happened. I mean, <laughs> you were involved. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough I think on that you. the ending that it stands now is definitely more Star Trek. I mean, it's about messages and ideas, and I think the message of don't be careful of these kinds of cults of personality and these cliques that can pressure you into doing things that you ultimately know is not right. Yeah. I think that that's very Trek. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I wonder what the punishment for them doing the maneuver would have been. You know, what I mean? like, I, like if they had done it, it, it was banned. They did it. They, they were found out, but nobody died. Right. I mean, it's probably it's lose of, their flight license. Well, I mean, if like what they're going to get is they're basically going to get a reprimand, right? That's like their positive outcome. So I guess doing the maneuver would have been harsher than a reprimand. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, was it was lying about this all worth it? In the long run, um, the episode doesn't really say that. I'd, I'd, although I'd have a hard time like, if they, had, if they had just fessed up to what they did immediately. If if they had, oh my gosh, we did this and he died. Mm. Like, what would Starfleet I'd say? Be like, at- I can't believe you you went and did this maneuver. Like, you are all out of Starfleet. This it doesn't feel like that's an appropriate punishment for what happened. I don't know. I think ultimately, <laughs> I mean, I think in the end, probably lying didn't gain or probably lose them anything i think that if they had done the maneuver lacarno and they were found out and they fessed up immediately lacarno probably would have said hey it was all me i used my influence did this he would have been expelled the other guys would have lost the license got a reprimand and probably held back a year yeah uh yeah. I, i'd say i'd say the ultimately lying didn't change maybe it didn't change that much no i think that, maybe I think not that, they, that they got find out if they were lied and were successful they would have gotten off better because they would have stayed in starfleet yes um, yeah yeah or at least people get reprimands all, all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah heck, it... heck Riker has a reprimand on his record for a diso for not letting his captain beam down on a planet and picard saw that as uh as, basically yeah, he right. put it on his resume <laughs> <laughs> i guess it's yeah uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder i suppose interesting so, so speaking of getting away with it all right so i think it's Star Trek seems to suggest that when you see something on the view screen, it's not like a camera that's pointed on the front of the ship. When you see something on the view screen, it's your sensors detecting something, getting information about it, and basically that image is rendered in the viewer. Yep. So when that satellite sees a picture of them, that's basic. I guess we could basically assume that is a data. Is it? It's data that it took of these four of these five ships, and it reconstructed it in that picture. Yep. But doesn't that? I mean. Your eyes can deceive you, but can sensors deceive you? If they have that image, isn't that conclusive proof that they're lying? And isn't that only one possible formation that they could possibly be doing? So doesn't they don't they have all the proof they could possibly need in order to say, hey, we know what you guys did. You're out. You know, it seems like a very poorly run prosecution. At, at like, level. oh, well, we don't have any evidence. You have all the evidence you need. And they, I, they also just wrap it up by just saying, like, you guys seem pretty guilty, <laughs> but we can't prove anything. So uh, we'll just give you a reprimand. Yeah, it's it's um, I think it was more of a case of incompetent prosecution. And also, who's what is that actor from who plays the Vulcan? Um, he's Satelk. I don't know. I, I would say I think it would be it would have been more effective if the data had been obfuscated in some way like oh yes uh the this is what the image looks like it's showing we can uh enhance it and this is what we think it shows but doesn't like obviously clearly see their damn faces in the cockpit right i I feel like the data is too clear they should have made it kind of 
garbled more, and weird looking. Yeah, more, uh, more as far ob- as oblique. Satelk, he's played by Richard Fancy. I don't recognize him from anything. Uh, he was on Seinfeld. Oh, that's right. It's uh, Mr. Lippman. Okay, yep. that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, there we there we go. Answer question answered. Interesting. Okay, well, uh, I think we've talked about first duty. A good Except point. Except that so awful we- helmet that Wesley's wearing. Yes, uh, with leather gloves too. I like with, that. With leather too. gloves and giant holes in the top of the helmet, <laughs> where shrapnel can enter and destroy the skull at, <laughs> at optimum angles. Uh, it's no, really no clear in crashes. HD. No one ever crashes in uh, in Star Trek, uh, except for this one time. Things went yes. horribly wrong. But they I mean, they have an the escape plasma. transporter, which I like the idea of. Yeah, you'd think that would be hardwired into the status of the ship. Like, yeah. why why do you have to activate it? You you think that the moment the moment that something goes critically wrong, you get beamed out of those uh, ships, but apparently not. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that maybe it's the idea of. It will tr- maybe it tries, but if the system gets damaged, and as we all know, everything can get damaged in Star Trek, then you have to pull the manual, you know, eject button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no circuit was, breakers or anything. I liked that idea though. Anyway, first duty. We are going to. Uh, I'm going to play a clip. We'll come back. We're going to give our final thoughts and ratings for first duty. Mr. Lacano has been expelled. They should have expelled all of us. They very nearly did. Mr. Lacano made an impassioned plea for the rest of you. He said that he'd used his influence as squadron leader to convince you to attempt the call board maneuver, and then to cover up the truth. He asked to take full responsibility. He did exactly what he said he would. He protected the team. I feel awful. I've let down everyone. My mother, my friends, you. You should feel bad. And you will pay for what you've done. Admiral Brand has decided that, in addition to a formal reprimand, your academic credits for the past year will be cancelled and you will not advance with your class. I understand. It's not going to be easy staying here on campus, everyone knowing what you did, You have difficult times ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you, Captain. You knew what you had to do. I just made sure that you listened to yourself. Goodbye, Cadet. Goodbye, Captain. All right, Christian, what'd you, uh, what'd you think of this one? Give me your final thoughts and uh, a rating on one to five for the, the first duty. I think it's a good episode. I think this is definitely what Star Trek should be doing more of. It should be brave enough to have conflict between its characters and make its characters human and fallible. It's far more interesting. This is the most interesting Wesley that we've gotten a chance to look at uh, because he's not a goody two-shoes. He's put in an uncomfortable position and you get to find out more about uh, the character. I wish they did more of this. Um, it's hampered by some of the problems that TNG always has a problem with, but ultimately it's a good episode, and while not perfect, uh, it's definitely an episode that I think I would rewatch uh, going through. It might not be super exciting, but I didn't find myself necessarily bored. I would give it a four. Sure. I, uh, I think I'd give this one a three out of five. It's... um. I think it's got all the pieces, as I mentioned before. It's just, it's not like firing on all cylinders. Yeah, for, well, the ingredients for the cake, you just didn't assemble them quite right. Right, you didn't let the dough rise or whatever. Like, there's, there's, you didn't let, nothing here is really connecting or hitting me on a super emotional level. Um, even though I do think it's clearly the best Wesley episode mm-hmm. out of all of them. Um, it's a little bit, and I, I sort of agree with you. It's like it's not exciting, but it's not bad enough where I wouldn't rewatch it uh, yep. to the point. So I don't know. It's it's just kind of that thing, and it's got those two great scenes that I'd really enjoy. I think it's a very satisfying Wesley uh, story sort of end. Um, and you know, it's 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 interesting in that regard. I just don't think that the I don't think that the moral dilemma of Wesley is interesting to me enough. Like, or or the show isn't writing it well enough to the point where i'd care it, it just feels like he's under the stress 
that I, I'm not really connecting with on an emotional level. Would you say that it would be more interesting if they made it less clear that the less, I mean, we can, we can look at it uh, as observers and say, well, obviously Wesley should have told the truth, but would it have been more effective if they had made that choice less obvious? Like maybe Albert was a shitty pilot and maybe uh, Locarno really does know what he's doing and like I said, make, make enhance show more of the positives of, of uh, Locarno, and then only later when he's desperately trying to hold on to this, uh, to to his reality, uh, that you see the darker side of him to make Wesley's choice a little bit more obvious. It's not like well, you got to tell the truth because obviously Locarno's a, a slime ball. Yeah. It's well, we don't really know what happened. Maybe make the maneuver less obvious maybe it's not a completely different maneuver maybe they're doing the maneuver but some variation of it during it that makes it more dangerous that oh well you know we we tried something but that's it, it's not as obvious a lie yeah i mean i i think that what it's lacking would be that like wesley's stake in it doesn't feel uh, big enough like they're, i i think it should have gone a little bit darker like they mm-hmm. were initially thinking. I think that would have helped it a little bit to make it, it you know, just, instead of Wesley just admitting this for the honor of it or them kind mm-hmm. of lightly covering up something that isn't doesn't seem to be that big of a deal, I think it needed to be a bigger deal for it to make sense yeah. internally. I do have one final thought. Sure. And that is, why does Nova Squad even exist? Because it's only five cadets on an academy of tens of thousands possibly well i don't know how big it is but at least well, thousands according, according of to the, the starfleet testing it's like very rigorous to get into starfleet and that that first season episode where wesley does the testing makes it seem yeah. absurd to get in but you have all these people from all these different races supposedly yep. and you only put five people on it who are all white humans yeah well uh there's a bajoran or something right oh, She's right, a, yeah, well you're right but like yeah i was, but my my question really is, why does something as obviously clicky as this exist on a place that's supposed to be as inclusive and diverse as Starfleet? I feel like ultimately this is the only way that Nova Squad ends. Like, how could anyone in management in the Academy uh, cadre not see that this is going to happen when you let something like this get so kind of powerful? I mean, look at any like the fall of any major sports program yeah. like Penn State like obviously they became almost too they became so big and no one gave them a dose of reality and then the scandal happens because they they let this cult of personality go go, go unchallenged basically how does starfleet uh explain oh yeah we totally let these guys basically just do whatever they want because they're awesome and we don't want to be awesome like Nova Squad. And then after this, Red Red Squad still exists and Red Squad is arguably worse. Yeah, I well, I guess my the counterpoint would be it, that that storyline to me always felt like it was just added in to it. And it, it, it's not a, like an integral part of Which the story. Part the- if you if you, if they have never mentioned that this squad was like revered on Starfleet Academy, I don't think it changes anything really in the well, story. I, th- I think it is important to have that because if there's no kind of reputation or or anything like that to uphold, then the reasons for following Lacarno are are kind of less clear. When look, Le- Lacarno has to be someone that you're willing. It can't just be oh we're buddies or he's my leader in this little group. It, that has to be right. That, I think it's that, ultimately what the would, message that they're trying to say is. That would tie into my that the issue doesn't seem big enough. You know, if like if there was a if there was a reason for what they were doing and it seemed much bigger than just sort of following him and uh, living up to this reputation, that would actually make sense to me. Yeah, it that's, feel, that's it, fair. Fe- it feels like what they're doing doesn't match the scope of what's there and it's only the script just telling you that though this is a very important thing it's you never see one scene where a lot of uh, tell not showing right you never see one scene of a groupie going like oh like the squad or whatever you you never see any of that so that's fair that's fair it it ultimately just feels tacked on anyway that's it so you gave it a four out of five i'm going to give this guy a three out of five which is interesting but 
Thank you guys for listening to the content. If you enjoyed it today uh, and you're on YouTube, like and comments, appreciate it. If you're on iTunes, a rating and review helps get the show out there. Um, but yeah, Christian, thanks very much for coming on. You're welcome, sir. You'll be back in a few days with... Um, what, what is it? The perfect, it is the perfect mate. You'll be back in a couple episodes. So, guys, thanks so very much for listening. I'll see you later.